All right. I've got a fully orchestrated work here that we're going to show the automation with this console, okay? And this is all the machines talking to each other that it takes to do this. And I think that, um, uh, that, that, that you'll enjoy this, but then we're going to explain a little bit more about it. While, while the music bed is playing, uh, we'll be showing you different items here in the control room and, and how they are responding and, 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 and where information is coming from, okay? Like I say, this is an orchestrated piece, and uh, one of the first things that will come up is uh, is a note, a tuning note. I think it's a concert C on the oboe, and I like having that on something like this. It, it, it does two things. It lets everybody get in tune, plus I can see that everything is working right, or not.
to do it for that. Now, I want to um, show you a little bit more about this console. Um, <clears throat> we explained that it was several layers, and, and what I, I can tell you a little bit more about it. All the sound comes in in this direction here to the first layer. And uh, uh, we have you, a couple of different matrices. This is routing over here. And this is a, a matrix here, and there's a, another place to, this is kind of like the swing routing matrix. It, uh, it tells, this, this section here tells these switches here what to do, that's all. And you set these switches up a number of ways. <coughs> you, can, <coughs> you can set them up to, to be one thing or another or another thing. Like for instance, if I want to take that and make it something on a different layer, like a, uh, a bus for instance. Okay, bus level. I can look at it right now. And I can tell the bus level of everything that's on uh, in the bus, and I can take and push the bus, and then I can, I can, I can, I can tweak it from right there. See, and and then um, it, it saves you the trouble of having to push a button. I guess some people are so lazy. So anyway, I usually just leave them as pants. But you can make this all all these be. Uh, um, uh, the, the noise gate, the limiter, the EQ, everything. And this has several uh, several major effects built into it. Every channel has a compressed limiter, a gate, uh, it has expanders, it has EQ. And this is called the fat channel right here. They call it the fat channel because you just hit that on the screen, boom, 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 and it makes this very easy and very quick, very fast. And that was a plus for, for getting this console. And anything that you do here, you can also do here, here to here. And there's several different ways to do just about anything there is to do. And as you can see, I've had to, when, when you buy them from the factory, they're flat. And I've raised the back of this one about four and a half, five inches, I think it's four and a half inches, so that I can get to it easier. Okay, you'll see this thing's pivoted up. And I made all these cabinets. I made, I made the racks and the cabinets. They're all my own design. Uh, so if they fall apart, it, it, this, this, this stuff has to be made, like this stand here, it has to be made and fully assembled, and then it has to be completely disassembled to move into this room, and then it has to be reassembled. So it has to be able to collapse and be rebuilt several times. And that is uh, an automated mix. All right, now we're going to go out all four doors of the control room, okay? And we're going to go out, this is door number one right here. And so come with me. And I, and I want to show you right here, these are my spare cables and stuff that I have. I, we've got a whole uh, uh, room, actually, that's, that's about half full of cables. These are just the ones that I use all the time. And this is door number one. Come back in here. Okay. And this is an isolation booth. All right, and this is the, the, the restroom. And uh, and this is where I can put a vocalist, uh, set up a vocalist uh, or, or a guitar amp or put the guitar player. Uh, it all depends. Uh, this is a multifunctional room. Um, and uh, it's it's just here. Uh, I use the sound stage more often probably for recording. But it's a nice dead room. You know, it's just very dead in here. And uh, this is the angle here where somebody's tracking. And, and when I've got like a vocalist here, I just take that stuff there, the speakers and the monitor there, and just drop them down on the floor. They never know the difference. And this right here, I got this big rug here so that, I can, so that people can uh, 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 walk on my cables here and not do any damage. Now, and I'll just explain this. Uh, this line here is my Cat 5 for the DSL. That's my computer line. And this right here is the big snake coming from the box out in the sound stage, which we'll explain, and going into the, the control room. This is it here. And these two lines here are headphone cables. One of them goes to the headphone system, and the other one comes back to the headphone system, to, to my headphones in the control room. It smells nice in here, even though it's got all this carpet. I got this little, this little thing here. And, and, uh, and I burn candles in here, it, you know, it's, even though it's carpeted, I try to make the place smell nice. And now, let's go out another door. All right. Okay, Jen, now we're going to look at the sound stage. And the sound stage is out there. 
And to get there, we have to go out door number two. We have to go into what we call the airlock. And this is the airlock. And then we come in here into the sound stage. And uh, we're going to start here with these devices here. These are called soundaliers. I called them that after a chandelier, but it's a sound chandelier. So I called it a soundalier. And I actually invented them. Um, uh, they are modular and they hang on chains. I can raise them up and down to all, the, all different lengths of chains I've got here. And I've got a whole uh, box full of them. And I can make them any, put them anywhere in the studio here to change the acoustics. I can put them around a cabinet, I can put them around a player, a singer, and I can change the way that, uh, that the room sounds. And, and like, uh, 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 well for instance, uh, Friday morning I've got a gig, and what I'll be doing, I'll just show you one. I'll have to do this. I'll have to, uh, uh, there's a ladder here. Hang on a second, I think there's a ladder. See what I'll be doing is I'll be hanging uh, up a uh, a row of them like this. Okay. And then I'll be sliding a barrier underneath it like that. And they'll have a, a row across the top here, like that. And then I'll probably put another set of barriers in back of it here. And speaking of the barriers, uh, these are sound barriers, and they separate people that are playing, but they also kill outside noise. Same as with the sound of Lears. Uh, they're great at killing sound uh, and, and separating sound. And I, uh, this is pretty much my design. These are uh, our old office partitions that I took and converted them and I made all these stands. They're all different. I had different prototypes and they're pretty solid. And, uh, and I've got what, six of them or something like that. And these are just hat racks and coat racks that I use for cables and uh, headphones and stuff like that. And uh, come show you this. This is the control room from in here. So whenever a, a singer is singing in here, or, or whatever, this is the view that they get here. And I got these candles in my head. Light a candle or two. And of course when there's a singer singing, I, uh, I dim the lights. I uh, um, make them feel as good as I possibly can. And uh, here is... Uh, here is the headphone tree. This is the Noah tree. And uh, keep everything separated on it. And uh, let's, let's show you a couple of microphones here. All right, uh, uh, this mic here is a uh, Sennheiser 431. It's a super cardioid uh, dynamic mic, which is pretty rare. And it sounds great. It's fantastic. That's the microphone that Stevie Nicks uses live. And uh, just great sounding microphone. Uh, the, uh, the Sennheiser 431, 441, 420, they're all great. Well, 421, fantastic microphones. And uh, this right here, this right here is an AKG CP414. I can show you a couple, couple of things about that. They're nice. They're a studio standard. And uh, um, let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to I'll. I'll uh, show you the first, the front part of it first. Okay. First of all, these mics, any of them, you can have upside down or front side up or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But right here, what you'll notice is that um, 
is you see these little symbols here with this little switch here. Okay, these are the polar patterns that this microphone will do. And when you've got it all the way over here, that means that both sides of the microphone pick up. All right, now one of them will be a little, the hot one will be probably a little bit more voluminous than the rear, but it's, it's great for doing different miking effects and getting different sounds. And then the next one over is a full circle. And what that means is that this side here of the microphone picks up everything around it in an omni, pat in, in an omni pattern. Okay, now the next one over is a cardioid, uh, or actually a hypercardioid. When you flick it right there, that means that this microphone is going to pick straight in front of it. It's going to pick up more or less straight, oh, and kind of like this. It's going to be more central, uh, centralized, the, uh, the pickup pattern. And then, and at that same time, it will also have a little bit of bleed over from the back. And then you've got a regular cardioid, which basically just means the front of the mic. Uh, and, and, and nothing in back of it, okay? So it's quite a versatile mic. You always want to have your volumes down if you're switching. Sometimes they'll pop. I, I always kill the, kill the channel. But now let's look at the back of it, okay? Now, first of all, what you've got here is, is, the, uh, is the pad, okay? It says 0, 10, and 20. So let's say that with this mic, I've got it on 10. I usually run it 10, um, even for a vocal. The mics are very sensitive. And sometimes with a loud instrument, you may want to kill a lot of the signal. You can go minus 20 dB. That will pad it. That will pad the signal like a, um, a full third and, and just give you more headroom, or, or two thirds, give you more headroom. All right? And then right here is your roll off. All right? So if you have no roll off, and then right here, if it's at the 75, that means that, that, the, that the microphone is set now with a little filter in it that will take the signal and just dive it down after 75. All right, and that's where I run it, all right? And for certain instruments or whatever, I'd probably have no roll off, and I would very seldom, unless I was in a very noisy environment, I would never have it at 150 roll off. I just would never do that. But anyway, this is a, um, it's a studio standard, it's a classic. It's a wonderful microphone, has a, has a, uh, uh, a real neat characteristic, and a lot of people use them. They've been around for a very long time. And uh, let's see what else we got here. This is a, uh, a tube microphone. Now with a tube mic, you have to uh, turn them on uh, way before the session. I like to have a tube mic warm up four or five hours before I've got a session before. Uh, they, uh, they get nice and warm and they sound better. And as a matter of fact, when you first turn one on and you've got somebody singing, uh, like let's say that uh, uh, a producer or somebody just comes in and they want to use that mic and it hasn't been on, it doesn't sound very good at all. And, and then it starts sounding better and so, well, you know, I tried to tell you, you should have used something else, da 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 and so whatever. Okay. And I put these over the microphones just to keep the dust and the moisture out of them. Uh, it seems to make them healthy and uh, like me better. Um, let's come down here next. Uh, this is uh, part of the monitoring system. And uh, this is set up directly from the window in yonder. So I can see this. Uh, this is the headphone amp here. And I can always check and make sure that somebody, that the signal that I'm putting through the system is getting into the headphones just by watching the green LEDs bounce here. And I can see that from inside the control room. Now, when I had the headphone system set up towards the rear of the sound stage, uh, when I was doing um, a, a live show and just left them down there, I, uh, um, I, I couldn't see it. So I had to use binoculars in the control room to see my headphone preamp. It was just like, nothing to what? And up here, some DIs, some real nice DIs. I want to explain a little bit more about the DI box. Uh, DI means direct in. DI box, direct in box, or input. And basically what you have is you have an a input right here, either low impedance or high impedance. It's got a pad here in case your signal's too strong, like, a, like you had a bass guitar head or a keyboard that was really hot and you could knock it back 20 dB or 40 dB here. But uh, what this does is it's, a, it's, it's got a transformer in it and it takes the high impedance input signal and turns it into a low impedance output signal, which means the line can be run very long. It's a much quieter amp pre. Uh, amp -pre. Here's the switch for on and off, or the ground lift here, and here's where the battery goes. 
And I can either run this off of battery or I can run it off of uh, phantom power coming in from the mixer console. Uh, the, um, the mixer console has little switches that send a 48 volt DC current out to the house because there's many different microphones that require phantom power, the 48 volt DC uh, uh, electric line to operate the, uh, the condensers. And this is a real good one. Now I've got two of them uh, for running in stereo. Uh, sometimes I'll run Harp uh, with these and, and a mic. And they put that, get a great stereo image using them. That's why I like them. And this system here powers the, uh, the monitors in here, the stand up monitors. And on this headphone system, I got one headphone here, one, one send. I don't mess with a bunch of the headphone mixes. I mean, uh, they're, they're just no point. If somebody can't hear out of headphones, they're just not a pro. And uh, uh, they're there to trigger. They're not there to be, you know, fidelity. Um, but anyway, this is the input coming in, okay? And all of these are the headphone outs. And see this green cable here goes into this amp head and it comes out of a headphone out. And these two right here they are the long ones. This is the drums and the control room is that one. That one's mine right there. You'll notice my volume's like way down. And look at these others. Drummers like these things real loud. You know, and this one here, it's it's loud in here, and it's just on one, and so it's 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 pretty it's a pretty efficient system. We've got plenty of headphones. I've never run out of headphones. So if we come out here. We'll put this over here. But come out here. We've got uh, another uh, another amp head. Uh, these are the two uh, my, my main two uh, soundstage monitors right here. They're EVs, and we've also got these uh, floor monitors that run off of the other amp head. And uh, uh, this this unit back here is a regular uh, the UPS system, an uninterrupted power supply, because I've got several uh, microphones here that run on their own custom-built power supply. And what I'll do is, is I will use one of these. If it's a condenser with a microphone, and you get a spike, it's going to carry through the mic. Uh, it's, it, you know, pop clean. It just eliminates a lot of the problems that I would have here with electricity if I didn't use one. Uh, right here, this conglomeration of uh, cables, this is all the snake. You know, when we were in the, in, in the, um, in the control room, I showed you the, the uh, the, the cables as they went into the back of the, the, the mixing console. And this is the snake uh, head, the box, that they all, all the microphones come into. And then I've got these sends here that I can take into one of the amps, or I can feed back for somebody else's independent headphone system or whatever. And it's quite versatile. Um, this is my old chair. I had this chair down in Florida. I bought it in 1991. And it's been all over the country with me. <laughs> And I uh, brought it down from uh, Illinois because the, the mice started eating underneath it. And I was like, oh no. So I brought it down here. Now we can all crash or take a rest or take a break or something. And back there is more uh, stage uh, props. These are the drums. And uh, it's a PDP set. And I can change the sounds of the drums by moving my foam up and down. I always tell drummers to bring their own cymbals because that makes, and, and their own hi hat cymbals. Uh, uh, because that that gives them a more characteristic sound, and uh, and and you know it doesn't sound like everything that came out of the same studio had the same drummer on it. And then the kick, I use a 421 Sennheiser. It's a great mic. Great sound mic for kick. Durable. And let's see. Let's go around this way. Uh, there's the red barn, and uh, and no, the window does not open, and uh, and, but, and the door doesn't open either. This is just a painting, but there's gouges here where somebody probably tried to get in there one time, you know. I don't know. No. So anyway, but anyway, back in back of here is my um, is my air return, and also the uh, just a couple boxes of junk. And, this is a uh, this little thin folding table. We've got several of them. Whenever I know that there's like a big band coming with a lot of guitars or trumpets, woodwinds, so you may have a trumpet player that brings three trumpets. 
you know, so I put these tables out so they can lay their cases on them. And uh, if there's a big group, like uh, a lot of woodwinds or strings or whatever, I, they'll I'll call out one section to go first. Uh, clarinets and flutes go first. Uh, violin second, violas third, and they can put their cases underneath. And I'll put them either out in the sound, out in the uh, in the airlock, or somewhere in the sound stage where I know they're not going to be. Well, there's still a little bit more. Let's go look at something else, Jen. Come on. Can we get some shots here of the sound stage? Because now it's changed completely since we did the first shoot. You'll notice the red barn is in front of the drums. I'm going to show the ceiling here. We're vaulted. The ceiling is vaulted, and that's all kinds of padding and stuff. And we're 14 and a half feet in the dead center. Spin around this way. And uh, I want to get this because tomorrow we will uh, uh, be changing the, the entire sound stage around again, and it won't look like this. So I wanted to get a shot of it like this, okay? This is after I had a band. I'm just going to go up this way. And you'll notice that there, well, there's one of my hat racks or, or coat racks. And that's what I use well, when I've got uh, all the cables off of it. That's what I do with it. I just set it up in the corner so that lady can put her coat and, and her pocketbook on it. It's going to spin around here. And show how I got this set up. There's the headphone tree. Come around here. We stand for peace. So I've got the mic set up. We'll see where the sound of layers are here from here. Perhaps. I'll try to get a shot of the back of the barn. Here's the back of the cottage. The back of the barn. The back of the barn is this cottage. Look at pig is going to pick up. There's the wood stove with the fire going. Come right there and just pull up the rocking chair. Prop your feet up. Stay nice and warm. Back in the control room. Okay. Now, we're going to go out door number three. Come on. And we're going to go right across the hallway into this room. And this is what we call the video lab. This is Johnny's workstation. This is where, where I do work. We call it the video lab is because it used to be my lab. I uh, had a table set up here to do electronics repair and stuff like that. And, and we started getting more and more into the video aspect of things. And so this, it, we uh, just started calling it the video lab. Now, this is the only workbench that I have. And, and I use these in the control room uh, sometimes to do transfers. Uh, but uh, this is the only table I work on now. And this is uh, an, old, an old MIDI system here um, and some other digital stuff. Uh, here's um, uh, let's see here. Okay. We, we don't get to use these babies. We don't get to use these. They won't let me and, me and Trent use those. That eyepiece is the size of the camera, man. That eyepiece is as big as our front piece. But it's nice. We got several of these that we shoot with. And all around here, oh, this is just, this is our, this is the main video editing computer. It's a big powerhouse. It really does good. It's fast. It's got a bunch of fans in it. And uh, this is basically uh, where we are going to be editing uh, the, uh, this, this video that we're cutting. 
So, let's go back in here. touch sensitive and I constantly tap them so that I'm always triggering that fader because your arm can lean up on another. Now the Yamaha you have to move that fader a little bit to activate it and, and with Tascam if you touch it it activates or you can turn that off but I love the feature because I can do this and look at every channel that fast and I like doing that and, and uh, uh, there's all kinds of beauties of this board. You want to mute everything? Boom! There you go. You want to unmute everything? Boom! There you go. I'm, 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 well, whatever your fingers are. So anyway. Now you'll hear that. It's coming through his headphones. A lot of times musicians have to have their headphones so loud to hear that the bleed over comes through for some reason. I can't do it. I used to try to hear exactly what they were hearing. Man, I had to turn my volumes way down because I just can't take it. They, they can't hear the death. Right now, that's got a limiter on it. But I'm just starting to... And then I can boost anything inside this deck. I can boost it like 30 dB. Watch me do this. And I save it by doing that. And each time I do that, it comes up saved. So we can hear our reverb. This uh, this console has set, has six different layers. This is this layer here is my A layer, my first layer, first 24 channels. That's all my mic lines and 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 line inputs coming into the, the deck, and that means that these controls up here and these switches up here are all active. They all help me with this layer. This layer here is all of the instruments and all the sound coming off of the HD 24 coming back into the board, and so. Uh, so when I'm tracking, I have, you know, I, I mute them, go back to lay, uh, fader layer A, and that's what people hear in their headphones. All I got to do is hit the that and turn the channel on, and boom, they've got it in their headphones. It's that fast. And it sounds great. This is the next layer, which is my effects returns. That's all that this channel, that's all that this right here does, is, is bring the effects back in. And, and I can also set it up for digital inputs if I want to bring something digital back in. This right here is my bus on my bus channel and this is all of the inputs of the HD24 so when I set something up on fader layer 1 or uh, okay and then I bust it over with this matrix here let's say I want uh, uh, channel 
the keyboard, a 9 and 10, and I've got a length in stereo, which means you move one, you move both of them. All right? So if I want this right here to go into 9 and 10, I just hit 9 and 10 up there. Then I come to this right here and boost up 9 and 10 here, and boom, it's, it's, it's in the pocket on the HD24, 9 and 10. And all I'd have to do is hit these sources on, which I don't want to do now because I'm setting up for something else. All right? But anyway, it makes it so easy to get a great signal on the HD24. You never have so much comfortable comfort in, in working with an HD24 as you have with one of these units if you're good enough to record and mix and you don't have to use automation for everything. Uh, if you're going to use automation with an HD24, you, all, you need to have each song on its own project line uh, or song line and you need several seconds in front of that song so that the instrumentation can, uh, so that all the clocks can sync up with themselves. And the, which takes more time to mix, but you can get it just absolutely perfect and constantly be saving along the way. And another thing, another drawback of going with automation and the HD24 is that when you do that, you have, you have to take more time to back up. The engineer has to do a lot of backing up when the customer is not here. So you can just double your backup time. And which, which it just takes more time. If, if somebody comes in here and they want to automate, fine, well and good. I say the pros and cons. And generally, with my, with my recording, if I know enough about what they're trying to record, I can get it in 24 channels, no big deal. And you, you're mainly going to use your automation when you've got several instruments that you're having to stack on one line. But hey, we've got so much here. I mean, look how many channels you got. These are my auxiliary synths. Now, the auxiliary synths are or uh, uh, this is delay send, um, uh, this is going to be the headphones, so I'm going to go ahead and mute them and save it. And this is for the reverb tank, this is for the other reverb tank. And I also use that V2 unit, I use that a lot for my gated, it's got real good gated uh, uh, reverb for snare. I use that, that's mainly my drum uh, reverb, because i got two reverbs in this, uh, two delays in this, and I love the sound of them. There's one guy, in. Uh, out of all the reviews that I read about this machine, there was only one guy that said that he didn't like the reverbs in it. And on the um, and on, on on in Gear Sluts, there was one guy that didn't like the digital delay. Well, I think they both sound fantastic. I mean, what are you comparing it to? They probably are listening to it out of some little small piece of crap speakers, you know, with a piece of crap amplifier. They probably don't even have a good a good system. They probably can't even tell what it actually sounds like. But anyway, this is my auxiliary sends, and I've got 12 auxiliary sends. And the last layer here, which I don't have activated, when you hit the remote, that tunes you in when you've got the motos and the computer all synced up. That takes you and allows you to do all of your mixing in the computer right here. So you don't have to mix with a mouse. And now I've got something that is hammering into my three and four auxiliary bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe my finger right here. Oh, well, look at there. That guitar there is going crazy in the 3 and the 4. So I just take up here to my fat channel and try to turn, turn down 3 and 4. Let's go another one. There's another one bleeding into 3. That means that the template that I brought this up on, I used it on something that had a lot of reverb on those channels. So here's another one. 3 and 4. the other effects. And that's how you do that. So now we can start to build on a mix.
during the day because we needed the light. So now we're going to start at the front of the building and we're going to walk down this hallway here. And we're going to go to the very back of the building. And we're going to see some of the stuff that we've got back there. Okay, now we're back in the airlock again. And this time we're going to go into this door right here. And this is the materials room. This room doesn't have any light. Oh, of course. Well, it does. It's got a light that works, but it's one of the switches and one of the panels, and I couldn't find it the other night, so I'm kind of leery of it. Now, right here uh, is where we store um, materials for uh, for the pleating and the uh, in the airlock and for different effects and stuff like that. And all of these are different stage titulates that can uh, uh, go with the stage that we've already got out there or I can put them together in, in, in different arrays to make them do different things. Uh, some of them are sloped, some of them are like ramps, some of them are stepped. They have different configurations with them. Uh, this is my uh, surplus of wood that I always have on hand. I can build just about anything within a moment's notice for props. And, and uh, they're very, uh, uh, well, I've got wood stashed everywhere. This is the main wood pile here. And when we come into here, this is what we call the shop or the warehouse. And uh, this is where the, uh, the AC unit is, up here. And, and I designed this uh, so that it, it sits on cushions, it floats. It, uh, so when it kicks on or whatever, and, it, and none, of it, none of the sound of the rumble of it penetrates through the, uh, the building into the sound stage. And it's sitting all on cushions and rubber bushes. And to soften it down even more, I've got that mattress up there above this record plate. That's mattress. And nothing kills sound as good as a mattress, box springs or something like that. Uh, here is all uh, product. We, uh, we sell a lot of DVDs, a lot of CDs, and uh, we have several big accounts. And uh, uh, we have stock all up over there, up, up, and, uh, up above of that. And uh, right here is where I can pull any of my vehicles in and work on them. I can, I can work on the engines, tune-ups, uh, do whatever I need to do right here. Or I work on the four-wheeler or the scooter. And uh, these right here are my tools. And um, there's their, their basic tools. This is all fasteners like hooks and screws and, and, and nuts and bolts. This is the electrical kit, uh, sockets and wrenches in these two. And uh, here I've got drills and saws and stuff like that. I do remodeling houses. And, and I can throw all this stuff in the... Um, in the back of the van or the truck at any time and just take off. So um, if anybody's got a, a bathroom problem, electrical problem, panel problem, or their vehicle breaks down, boom, I'm on the way. Uh, this is just an old um, VHS matrix. It's just not just there because it's there. But now we're going to go into this little room here. Come on. This is the duper room. And, uh, and right here, let's start right here. And this is what we call the production line, assembly line. We'll have uh, raw product here, and they start to get packaged, and they get sent down to the next person here. And then it gets to the next person here, where where it's uh, it's sealed right here. Like a, this is like a typical CD, DVD um, um, jewel box. And then you seal it. Oops. And then, you just shrink it. Let the guy warm up a little bit. Whenever things warm, 
Just shrinks it all up. Like that. So we have to keep this room stabilized pretty much and, and clean. Okay, and then you have it sealed. No big deal. And let's see, this is a DVD uh, uh, duper. It's a, it's a robot automatic arm. It takes them and records them. It does two at a time. And this one here does eight at a time. It does eight at a time. It does CDs or DVDs, the same as the other one. And that one over there does only CDs, data, and, and uh, regular music CDs. And um, we store common stuff up there. It's no big deal. And, and then this uh, machine here is pretty neat. And what he does is this is a, a thermal imprinter. And this computer here tells this machine what to do. It's got all design. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it print one. And you'll see how it works. It's a real smart machine. Really handy gadget. It imprints on the uh, CD itself, and you can't wash it off. You can't wipe it off. It's actually burned onto the, the CD. And when it's burned, it looks something like this. All right. I was working on this mix in one of the, uh, the other takes, and I was thinking, well, you know, as I was watching it, I said, well, you never got to hear the whole song. Uh, what, what is that? And, and I had just played bits and pieces of it, and I got a couple little touch-ups to do here, and uh, for, the, for the best part, I, I've, uh, uh, I'm tracking to the computer, and let's see what we got here. <laughs> I'm going to take the sound and take it from that hard drive and put it on this hard drive. This is mixing down. And this is what I do a lot of, believe it or not. And uh, we get on these switches here because I'm going to be taking the mandolin and the finger picking and I'll be fluctuating them throughout the tune. All right, let's get one going here. Just so 
this does here. This process is known as mastering. I need to tighten the camera up on my main control room computer here. But you see that screen there. Now I'm going to name it. Truncate it. You always want to leave about a second before each tune. That way you never chop off the first quarter note. there. Really hot. 
pickers. I'm going to lay that out, and voila, that's what we have there. And then when I master it, I've got my choice of all kinds of neat little goodies. I'm going to use a C4 in my line, and then an L2 in my line. Okay. CD, a warm sounding CD. Throw a little bit of salt and vinegar and sugar on it and it just makes it sound really good. And I believe that I have the same thing